Silvia Favaro. I'm a researcher in the T. Ritchie Group at Imperial College London. In this series of videos, we will show you how we test electrochemical technologies at the laboratory scale. This video will focus on the member electrode assembly. When testing electrocatalysts, three setups are mainly used the rotating disc electrode, the gas diffusion electrode, and the member electrode assembly. The member electrode assembly is the closest setup to a real device. Essentially, it is a miniaturized version of a fuel cell. The working electrode is composed of a gas diffusion electrode, uh, generally carbon paper, where the catalyst is deposited. This is the same as for the GDE setup, with the only difference that for the case of MEA, the counter electrode is also a catalyst coated gas diffusion layer. To make the ink, first the catalyst powder, solvent, and a polymer that acts as a binder are mixed to form the so called catalyst ink, which is then sonicated to disperse the catalyst. Normally, the catalyst is then deposited by spray coating on the carbon paper. It is then left to dry until it is ready to use. We can now set up our membrane electrode assembly. This is essentially composed of three chambers a gaseous chamber, a liquid chamber, and another gaseous chamber. The liquid chamber is here replaced by a membrane, which has the role of conducting ions and stopping the transport of other species, such as dissolved gases. The chambers are again separated by a catalyst coated carbon paper. Let's see how this is assembled. First, we have a flow field channel. This is essentially our gaseous chamber, but this time the gas which flows in and out from these tubes at the back is spread out evenly but by a design flow field. On top of the flow field, we will position a catalyst coated carbon paper. Once again, the carbon paper is hydrophobic to stop the cell from flooding, and the catalyst will be positioned facing the liquid side. This will act as our working electrode. At this point, we can add the membrane, which has been previously soaked in aqueous electrolyte. The rest of the cell mimics the first part and consists of another catalyst-coated carbon paper, which will act as our counter-electrode, and then another flow field. You might have noticed that in this case, there is no reference electrode. For a case of a member electrode assembly, the counter-electrode normally also acts as the reference electrode. This means that the potential applied at the working electrode is not measured against the known stable potential, but is measured against the potential at which the reduction at the counter electrode is taking place. As a result, changes at the counter electrode will influence the potential measured at the working electrode. What are we measuring is the potential difference between the reaction taking place at the working and the counter electrode, which is known as the cell potential. To start the measurement, we now only need to connect each electrode to the correct lead and start the flow at the external chamber. Most often, the gas is humified to ensure sufficient water supply. Liquid electrolyte can also be flown in place of gas, in the case where the reactant products are in the liquid phase. For example, this is the case for biomass oxidation. The member electrode assembly that we showed here contains all the essential components of a real electrochemical device. However, to optimize the space, in real fuel cells and electrolyzer, several of these member electrode assemblies are piled in a stack. 